Welcome to this edition of Able de Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this second half, <clears throat> we will focus on Shockwave, which is part of uh, the Learning Network, uh, Washington County Mental Health Services Recreation as well. Uh, with me, we have, uh, we have Mary Kay Casper, uh, coordinator of Supportive Employment and Community Integration, and we also have Wendy Capobianco, Cap Capobianco instructor for the Learning Network in Washington County Mental Health. Thank you again for joining Thank me you. on Able Dinner. Thank you. Thank you. And um, just to recap, mm. before we get into Shockwave, mm. um, what is the Learning Network for those that? Um, didn't tune in last time. We have, we do, we make available for people different opportunities for learning and exploring creativity. Um, people come in with uh, their support staff, with the people that support them in their living situation or on their own. And we have uh, our opportunities to engage in different courses and classes and activities. And especially with summer and spring coming, yes, it will get nice out eventually. Uh, going out into the community maybe mm -hmm. to have experiences they haven't had the chance to do before. We have had the opportunity to take people to the ocean mm. that have never been to the ocean, that sort mm. of thing. Um, and also to explore uh, writing poetry. Mm. It's National Poetry Month. Mm -hmm. um, to experiment with different artistic things, including uh, paint and drawing and photography, uh, collage, scrapbooking, mm. and various classes where you do more talking than doing, such as speaking up for yourself, <clears throat> uh, a little bit of history here and there. Mm. Uh, I take a class to the library every month. Every time I try to say, well, we, we've done that, and no, 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 we have to keep going. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right, we'll keep going to the library. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of themes. Mm. It seems like every week mm. you guys have, or mm. at least through the month, there's the theme of physical fitness and mm. health and wellness. There's mm -hmm. a theme of independent <coughs> living skills. Yeah. There's <coughs> an academic <coughs> theme. Um, <coughs> Wendy offers an independent study class mm. where folks <coughs> will um, <coughs> research and study a particular topic and then mm. teach it to the rest of the group. Or provide a report. Or, or provide a report. Yeah, that, yeah there's like, um, you know, the creative expression. Mm -hmm. um, so it's great how there are these so different themes so that it meets different needs <coughs> and interests. So, so tell us about mm -hmm. Shockwave. Is, that, is Shockwave a, um, a literary magazine, mm -hmm. a poetry magazine? What exactly is it? Or a poetry uh, newsletter? So it, it's actually mm -hmm. all of those. Mm -hmm areas that you mentioned. It's a shockwave. Actually, it's a, a larger program that offers the opportunity for creative expression mm. in all kinds of different ways. And then within shockwave is this magazine that was mm. developed over the years that is evolving into a professional magazine that's literary and art. Mm. And it's an opportunity to present to the world the artistic and literary talents of our individuals that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, so what types of uh, uh, things do you have? I don't have a copy of the magazine in front of me, but what, what types of things do you guys do within Shockwave? Is it, is it like new stories? Is it, um, so what? The foundation is visual arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm painting, drawing, collage. Um, one thing that's featured in Shockwave that's kind of a little different is we don't just have single artist work. We have collaborative work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when somebody comes in, maybe they are not feeling confident in doing their own work, but they might feel confident collaborating with one or two other people and coming up with a piece of art. We have uh, one person who uh, had never done art before, but likes to write. Mm -hmm. And that written word became that person's art. Mm -hmm. And has become featured in Shockwave as part mm -hmm. of collaboration with other artists. 
uh, visual artists. And then we discover we have a talent for poetry in mm. groups of folks, different groups of folks that come. Uh, and some don't necessarily attend, but they brought their poetry to us mm. when we asked for it. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing mm. to see how many people not only um, let us put their poetry in the magazine, but came to write poetry. Um, and again, collaboration, collaboration, yeah. collaboration. Some of the, I don't think mm -hmm. there's anything in Shockwave that was written in collaboration yet. In our poetry issue, we wanted to feature individual poets, and some of the poetry had already been written mm -hmm. and was submitted, but we also have, uh, I know, I've seen them up on the walls, uh, poems that have been written by groups yes, that, yeah. that, that are, are, are artwork in themselves, yeah. how they were written. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, why don't we do this? Um, because of course, um, of course, um, it'll be edited in. Why don't we take a look at uh, at the Learning Network and poetry, um, the Poetry City um, piece that um, Orca Media did. Let's take a look at this um, uh, at this quick segment. Let's take a look at this. Um, you know, like you told us um, before that. Um, you guys were invited into uh, into the library about mm. the um, poetry uh, uh, readings. Tell us a little bit more about that uh, for those that didn't tune in. What exactly happened? Well, it was like any poetry reading that you would go to. Um, mm. All our individuals had their poems and they came and each one was <coughs> introduced and mm. had the opportunity to speak to the rest of the to the audience about and present their poetry. Mm. We even have some folks <clears throat> that are so passionate that mm. they were able to present mm. that passion in a way by speaking about how important poetry is. Wow. Mm -hmm. So have, um, have any of them got published? Um, not yet, not but yet. that's the next step. That's really Doing a good a comment. Yeah. I would like to see that happen. Um, I'm one of our our painters in particular had mm. his painting mm. at the <coughs> Flint Center opening recently mm. for uh, people mm. with disabilities. Mm. And I spoke with um, mm. the folks for the center, um, people with, with visual impairment, mm -hmm. and we're thinking about uh, collaborating on a piece mm -hmm. that, like you're speaking to so we can have the opportunity to pu publish. Mm. So that's a really good point. And I hope that that's the well, yeah. do you yeah. think some of the your participants, um, okay. For, well, for example, since you're dealing with employment, if someone wants to publish a book or Great idea. that type of thing, do you guys help them with uh, publishers? Would you guys help them with anything of that nature? We would, if someone wanted to do that, we would definitely do that. Yes, of course. Yeah, and. Um, Many of us that work at Washington County have connections to other places and different resources, so we would use each other to access that. Um, mm. I have a friend that's a poet and a painter, and mm. I had her look at these pieces, and she was amazed and said, this is professional work, and so she's interested. She has a online journal, mm. and she said that we would be very interested in publishing the written work and the um, paintings of our of the individuals if they wanted mm. to have that mm -hmm. put in. So mm -hmm. we got to utilize our resources to get out there yeah. and assist in getting <coughs> to, to This This work. seems like a good place to mm. break in and, and, and toot our own horn a little bit. We had a Shockwave magazine had a, uh, a show at Studio Place Arts, the spa mm. in yes, Barrie right, in right. Uh, January, mm -hmm. all from January into so February. How did that go? Uh, so what was the response? It was overwhelmingly positive. It was mm. absolutely wonderful. Um, we took the group over and had a, had a little opening, and people mm. came by, and we got some verbal feedback mm. as well as written feedback. And mm. um, we really want to thank the people at the spa for making that, nice. that possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is, how do you retain the copy of the magazine? Pardon me? Yeah, if, 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 someone, if, someone, if, someone, to wanted to, if someone wanted to come, uh, uh, um, or if someone wanted a copy of Shockwave, how, does, one How get does someone it? get a copy? So yes, we and we even have copies, still have copies from the mm -hmm. past. So if you want a copy of Shockwave, 
you just write to us and we will put you on our subscription list mm -hmm. and we will send one out or bring one to you if you live in the you know, central Vermont area. Central Vermont area. area. Not Vermont. at the end of a dirt road in mud right. season. Right. I, have a, I actually have somebody, we have an Instagram account mm -hmm. for our work for the work and that's another way to get the word out and on the Instagram and it's uh, shockwave art magazine mm -hmm. and on that you can like it and you can put uh, write down that you want to get a copy of it and let us know and we'll see. How send. large is shockwave? Is it like a huge magazine type it's of thing? It's about this big. It's about mm. it's that size with mm. um, 12, 12 pages or so, mm. if you count, you know, yeah. Yeah. this is a page, so yeah. mm -hmm. we yeah. print it ourselves. Yeah. We're, we're are definitely a shoestring it's operation. Yeah. I don't know if you read the, um, so, uh, what's that magazine, what's that paper? Which one? The one that comes out every Wednesday. Oh. Seven the, Days? The, oh, seven, day, seven Days on the Bridge, something, about, something um, like that? Or? They had something about these disability films that came out. Oh, yeah. Speaking about you know, the media, right? And we talk about films um, and media as well. Um, what is your opinion? No, you're talking about artists, okay? Um, artists sometimes are like starving artists, you know? Um, what is your opinion about, um, let's say for example, if someone in your group wanted um, to learn about film or TV or media or something like that, or to learn how, you know, what is it that, that goes on in a film set type of thing. Would you guys make that happen for, because um, I know Vermont. <laughs> already it, happened. <laughs> it already happened. Yeah. Explain a little bit about that experience if you would like. Well, it's not something I'm at liberty to discuss in any detail, but we uh, have a number of folks who have gotten degrees at mm -hmm. universities. That's one way of That's finding nice. that sort of thing That's out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. At okay. least to keep the and, mind and working. Yeah. If somebody was interested in an apprenticeship type thing, I'd, we'd go looking for that. Mm -hmm. We'd probably access the people that got degrees and see if they had connections. And access That would be a good place to start. Yeah, and places like here and you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like access, accessing you in terms of helping to support us provide those opportunities and what can ORCA do to help us provide. Mm -hmm. So there's a, this is a wonderful resource to you know, bring, bring in. Because you know, Vermont mm -hmm. is, well, I mean, there's, um, you know, movie festivals and that type of thing. Yeah, they have certain it's, movies. But at out. first, Vermont wasn't the type of place to have those things. But now, um, you know, there's poetry readings, there's uh, film days, and so on and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they have um, the film days. So, Shockwave, how long have you guys been publishing? It's been five years that Shockwave has been Is it? in, in um, origin, and it's always been published in some form. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't here mm. um, when it Who first came got started. the idea of Shockwave? We had a, a couple of artists in residence. One is no longer with us, and uh, Walt Ward, who is um, still with us, was part of the original Shockwave, and now we have Aaron Martineau, who is kind of at the helm of that ship. Um, but those are our two artists in residence, and I credit them with making so many opportunities possible for folks. Mm -hmm. Also, they make sure that the <coughs> magazine goes out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, they make sure that it gets sent in the mail to a few people, and then we have places they drop it off. It's published once a month. I don't think we said that. With a couple of special editions. Um, we had a special edition for the art show mm -hmm. at the spa. We had one for the Aldrich Library mm -hmm. show, which is hanging right now. Go to the Aldrich, Aldrich Library, folks. It's there to the end of April. Do, do you want to see Shockwave? on a larger scale? Well, it, it's interesting because Aaron and I have talked about this and, you know, it's becoming more and more difficult to print, you know, at, at our location and we really do need to find the funding source to be able to have was, a professional Did you ever think of putting it on the internet? People can read yes, it? Yes, that's the other thing. I, I would like to do an online journal and as soon as the agency is working on new, um, <laughs> technology and a new website, yeah. we will be going to an online well, journal. Because we had a handicapped paper in New York, it's called ABLE, but it's on, it's on, right. it's online. Yeah, that, that will be happening for sure. But see, 
<clears throat> what I would like to see, since you talked about <clears throat> Shockwave being a magazine, yeah. right? Yeah. What about this? Getting a group together, bringing them to a newspaper um, place where they see, see the yeah. uh, print, printing presses and all that. Right. What about like the, the bridge? Taking them to see or, the bridge. Or, or, well, now everything mostly is done online free, yeah. these days. Yeah. But they're, they're like the New York Times taking a trip to you know, there. Or the Daily News. And, or Daily know. News or something like that. So then you can make Shockwave into a newspaper. Or newspaper. Oh, the Time Angus and Barry. Yeah. Because everything now is done digitally. It's not right. like it was years ago where you see printing presses. I mean, some places still have them where you have printing presses. But, um, now, in terms of um, what goes into the magazine, is there someone there that. Um, kind of just says, hey, well, this goes in this month, this goes in that month, or does it, certain editions deal with, how right. does that work? So Aaron, who, um, so Walt does the open studio, mm -hmm. and any kind of, if there is a theme that's created with Shockwave, folks can work on it there, but also Aaron does a Shockwave class. And so uh, there are different themes to different um, editions. Editions, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, like it was a Halloween edition. Right. Or we have a Halloween one. edition, and then so folks, that's the opportunity for individuals to paint or write mm -hmm. related to that theme. Okay. And that's what goes in. So there's a deadline. There's a submission yeah. process. Just like uh, the whole oh, yeah. There's a theme that goes there out ahead of time. Because so. the media, there yes. is deadlines. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it needs to come in right. by October yeah. 1st for the October one. So right. you can have it during mm -hmm. October. So that right. stuff needs to be done in September. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah. um, now in terms, of, so there is a shockwave class. Yes, there is. Are you working with, since you're an instructor, do you work with the shockwave? How does that work within your so we have four instructors mm -hmm. um, and I don't do a whole lot of visual arts I uh, when I started my career I was an English teacher mm -hmm. so I deal with a lot of words I am a wordsmith that doesn't mean that the people who do visual arts just do visual arts they don't uh, they do graphic arts they do poetry they we sometimes uh, <laughs> we may be doing physical activities, but we also like to do uh, a little bit of cooking, a little mm. bit of meditation type, relaxation, chill time. Uh, even as so we speak, to, there's oh, relaxation so, techniques. Mm -hmm. So we try to so spread term, it out. In terms of, in terms of independent living skills, mm -hmm. you have a cooking class. Oh, we didn't touch on that. Why don't we uh, talk about <laughs> since we're talking about the whole recreation thing? Why don't we talk about the uh, cooking classes that you guys are? Very popular. Mm -hmm. Very popular. Eating has always been popular. Mm -hmm. We all do it. Uh, we all have our favorites. I think my favorite recent class was one where uh, it was healthy junk food. How do you make mm -hmm. uh, chicken nuggets yeah. out of real food as opposed to fake food? How could you make a turkey burger a little bit more like a Big Mac? Don't For people it. who... <laughs> for people who, my apologies, for people who don't like salad, how can we make salad more attractive? That sort of thing. It, it needs to be fun. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, it, it's no, there's no use doing cooking classes for boring things. Because people won't show up. <laughs> so we like to have a little well, uh, fun while we do it. That, since I, we, uh, we both have culinary experience, so we can. Ooh, talk ooh. About that. So let's talk after. Yes, yes. A guest spot, maybe. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful part about the extension of the cooking class is that we have a number of bigger events that staff put on where so many people gather. And, so, and many of those opportunities are, are included. Well, cooking, cooking competition. And cooking. Oh, that would be a really fun thing. But we do wow. all kinds of, whether they're spiritual events or birthdays or holidays of some of some kind, and food's always included. It well, seems the most recent me. one, we did a Passover Seder. Yeah. Mm. 30 people. 
Wow. Let us amazing. know next time. <laughs> yeah, we'll All right. invite you next time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Feel free yeah. to call in uh, March. or I, I know it's the full moon, first full moon. I, I, it's been explained to me 10 times. I still can't remember it. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah. But so, so um, now, so do you guys teach them about, well, independent living skills? You know, let's go into that since we have some time. Um, so if someone has their own apartment, Okay, we didn't get into that. You teach them how um, you deal with the cooking. You deal with, you teach them how to clean an apartment, or you use like a mock apartment type. So of thing. So we have done that in the past. I would like to say, however, that we have a supported apartment program that is part of community developmental services, so that people have regular staff hours mm -hmm. for whatever kind of support they need. Do you go into the? Those apartment? staff do go into the apartment. Ah. People, the people that live in their own apartments do also come to the learning network. Um, and we might do a class, well, well, somewhat recently I did a class on what to do in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody's had some instruction from the regular staff, mm -hmm. but let's face it, you don't talk about emergencies every week, you do grocery shop every week. Yes. Now, we don't provide grocery shopping support, but we might have a class on nutrition. Ah. And uh, let, let me encourage you to make these choices. And then, you know, we all do love macaroni and cheese, let's face it. We shouldn't eat it every day. No. So let's talk about that and how we might cook around that. Or I did a class once on how to cook one meal that will last you seven days. Obviously, you freeze most of it. <laughs> Chicken soup, for example. There you go. Can last there you go. Seven days. And how do you yeah. put it in the freezer and take it back out of that mm -hmm. sort of thing? And but in, but, but the, the basic support comes from the supported apartment program for folks that are living on their own and they need some of them very little support but they would might still come to class uh, <laughs> sometimes I have people come to class and they do more teaching than they do learning mm -hmm. and that's fine because it's really it's a like any other class it's a group of people who are learning mm -hmm. together so mm -hmm. learning together working together yeah. working in a team because mm -hmm. media for example if you're at a news station, so if we're talking about arts, you're working in a team. If you're working in a new, um, newspaper, you're working in a team. Um, an artist studio, right? Uh, <clears throat> you know, um, someone handing out paintbrushes, someone handing out paints. You're working in a team. Um, it's all about working together, you know, that type of thing. Um, now, uh, Shockwave. Since we have a couple more minutes here, um, you said that there was an address if someone wanted to get a copy. Do you have that address? Do you mind telling it's, our viewers? Um, 50 Grandview. 50 Grandview Grand Avenue. It's Grand Grandview. Grand G Not with a D. R A N V I E W okay. Drive. Grand, okay. And that's in Montpelier? Or? That's in Barrie. It, okay. Bar okay. So if you wouldn't mind repeating it again. 50 Grand View. G-R-A-N-V-I-E-W. Barrie V-T-05-641. 641. Okay. Um, now, um, for those, we're going to repeat this question again. Um, and it's good that we are. Um, you should always be creative as far as your art and stuff and never be scared um, of picking up a paintbrush or, or trying something new. Mm -hmm. And people have the misconception of, you know, like, oh, I'm scared. What are the misconceptions around people with special needs as far as, like, you know, when you first meet them. Let's repeat that one more time like we did before. That they don't have the ability to communicate, mm -hmm. that they don't have the ability or skills to have a job or to engage effectively or how we think effectively is. Mm -hmm. um, and you should never be afraid to do something or try something. You know? Right, right, it's true. Your, your take on the same question again? 
You don't know if you can do something until you try it. That doesn't have anything to do with disability. Exactly. It disability has goes out of the everything out of the to do with ability, and you don't know if you can play tennis or disc golf. We have a number of people who love disc golf until you try it. Or picking up a spatula and cooking something. Yeah. Um, you never know if you're going to burn it until you try to make it. Well, let's try not to. And you learn when you make mistakes. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. Even the best chef or the best artist makes mistakes. Um, they might not be eatable after a while. <laughs> <laughs> and that is your impetus to do it better next That's time. It, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, right. Well, I would like to thank you for joining us on this second part of um, Able Then On Air. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> for more information on Washington County Mental Health, uh, you can log on to www.wcmhs.org <clears throat> or if you need help in an emergency, you can um, call the following number, 802-229-0591. That's 802-229-0591. Don't be afraid to call if you have an emergency. Well, this puts an end to this edition of Able That On Air. I'm Lauren Siler. I'm on the side. See you next time for the next edition of Able Then on Air. Stay tuned.